Okay, this is the first time I'm uploading on the way that I'm uploading it, so this might be different. But this was kind of, um, this video was going to be the start of, excuse me, hopefully a chain of a couple videos where um, I feel that maybe I've talked to some other um, guys on here that do, you know, informative things and what have you. I truthfully feel that I might come from a different background, different understanding than a lot of um, other trans guys out there, or rather that I come from a different background than many of them that you see on, you know, camera. Um, I guess maybe just to give a disclaimer, that's my bird in the background, <laughs> all these noises. It's because I'm talking and he's mad, I'm not paying attention to him. Um, but usually I'm not the person to come to for gender-related advice. Uh, the reason for that is my personality. I'm very um, strong-headed. I don't sugarcoat things. I'm really blunt and honest and to the point about it. And oftentimes I feel that a lot of trans guys that are looking for help are, for lack of a better term, in a pity party. And it's not that I, I feel I do my part when talking to guys or talking to people or anybody for that matter by simply saying there's always, there's always something. There's always something you can do. Everything is within our own control. And, you know, if someone tells me oh, I can't transition, I'll never be able to transition because I live at home with my parents and I can't afford to, it's bullshit. <laughs> you can't. Uh, you live at home with your parents, you get a job, start saving your money. Like, it's about a priority. And that's where I personally uh, don't relate to all the other trans guys just because I went through it. I am someone who went through this myself. I transitioned when I was 18, and people say, oh, well, wow, that's lucky. Well, uh, I had no choice. That's, that's where it's different. I um, was in high school. I lived, I lived now, but at the time, I also lived in the metro area of Detroit. I researched my stuff online. I found that Portland, Oregon was a good place to go if you're trans. Met somebody on the internet that lived there. Um, applied for colleges out there, which I did get accepted to, but I ended up not going to college. I moved two weeks after my commencement ceremony from Detroit, Michigan to Portland, Oregon, knowing one person, well, knowing roughly other people, but actually only knowing one person and not for a long time. We were dating, uh, it lasted two months, very insignificant relationship in my book. It got me to Portland and got me, you know, out of this area, away from my family, but, you know, it wasn't much of anything. Two months after living there, I had nowhere to live. <laughs> I had a friend that I had met two days before this happened and ended up living with her and her family. I worked an entry level, minimum wage job, uh, you know, not making a lot of money. I had $300 in my pocket when I moved across the country. I found a place that helps you with your um, name change, uh, you know, all this stuff. Like I could go into detail about it, but it's not, it's not worth going into. There was struggle there, but it happened and it worked. And, you know, from that being said, that's just part of my story. I didn't have my family support at the time. Later I did. As a disclaimer, oftentimes parents who hear about this will say, oh, well, I'll never support them, I'll never do that. If your parents aren't, if your parents are there right now to listen to you even tell them this, they'll come around. They will, because I, I know it's been seven years since I started transitioning next month, which is really crazy to think. But I've seen a lot of other trans people, I've talked to a lot of other trans people, and I've lived it myself where if your family's not completely cut you out already by now, they're not gonna. They might not say they support it, it might not be the best thing, but they'll still be around. So keep your head up with that. <laughs> I had another video that I had recorded already and um, it didn't record all the way off my um, photo booth thing. So I'm kind of scatterbrained with what I was thinking and everything, but that bird is really distracting. Um, but I had a lot of other things I was gonna go into. I mean, just to give you an example where like I have no higher education, I changed my job in high school to a job that was out on the West Coast so I could transfer. I came back with the same job and transferred to retail. Got promoted to a manager, but you know I wasn't making any money. And um, got a new job, not making that much more money. I was there for three years. I got laid off in August, completely blindsided by that. Um, I've had very unstable living situations my entire life as an adult. I think I counted it out not too long ago. I lived 12 different places in the last four years and eight different places in just the last two years. Some due to relationships, some due to um, roommate problems, and other two of them due to renting houses out here in Michigan and paying the rent, but the landlord isn't paying the mortgage, so the house goes into foreclosure, so I have to move. So to give an idea, too, about how, you know, life is never ending, August I was laid off last year. Um, the house I was renting was in the foreclosure, so I had to move. So I had to move in December. 
I got rear-ended by somebody in September, and my car had to get fixed, and the guy had no insurance, so I had to take him to court, and I had to pay for it out of pocket um, for my repairs, you know, through my insurance, but still out of pocket. Then um, the hysterectomy that I had a few years prior, which another disclaimer to that is it took me like three or four years to find an OBGYN that would even treat me on top of the same thing as a PCP. Um, my insurance at the time covered the surgery, but then um, turned around unbeknownst to me and um, stopped paying for it, and I had a fee, but due to my moving problems, the paperwork never caught up to me, so there was a judgment put, put against me. So after being laid off, getting rear-ended, I woke up one morning to find out all of my money in my bank accounts, all four of my bank accounts, the little bit of savings I have and everything else, this is me being on unemployment, was garnished. Um, which happened to me now, it's been three times to pay off this bill and I really have no fighting chance because I didn't save from three years ago the paper saying that, you know, the insurance company paid for it. The reason they didn't pay for it is because when they went through their paperwork, they found I was a transsexual and decided that my surgery was mental illness related, since that's still quoted as a mental disorder, and um, gave me a co-payment, co co-fee, co co-pay, whatever, on the surgery, so it was a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> Um, talking about surgeries, it was thanks to my ex that I was with um, that pushed me to look into it, but I was able to finance um, a loan, barely can afford it for many of the years that I've had it, but I was able to have my surgery done in 2007, had a complication from that and had to have a revision, but it's just to say that, you know, all these people that are out there trying to raise funds for and everything, you can do it yourself, like, and I'm a perfect example of that. I work entry-level positions. I have no higher education where I'm at in my jobs. I work to get to without school or anything else. It's hard work. It's all about priorities. Any person that wants to, to have this happen, okay, you can't get a loan because your credit's bad, then start fixing your credit. You can't, you know, start transitioning because of your living situation, then change your living situation. There's always an answer to something. This was not easy for me. It wasn't easy for anybody. We all struggle in different ways, and it's not um, a healthy outlook. And I've stopped myself from doing it early in transition and throughout my whole life, not just about this topic, but it's not a healthy outlook to look at someone and go, geez, you know, I wish I was like them or I wish I had that, you know, as my biggest problem. We all could do that. But what's big and, you know, difficult for me to go through might not be, you know, the hardest thing for you to go through, but what you're going through that's the most difficult thing for you can be related to any emotions. Everybody's different and everybody feels different and I'm not one to sit here and say anything I never attack anybody's identity if you feel that you should transition It's up to you to you know decide your identity. It's not anybody else around you Don't let anybody you know try to tell you how you should or shouldn't feel um, In the same breath of air. I think that there might be different levels of um, you know transgenderism or you know gender dysphoria or anything to that regard because I see a lot of people who transition later in their life being, you know, even just mid-20s, where I was out when I was 15 because I had no choice. And it wasn't that I had this great supportive network because I, I really didn't. I had no choice. Well, you could look at the picture and say, well, your mother let you dress like a boy or your mother let you cut your hair when you were young. I, I, I didn't. I made my mother let me because I would not have it any other way. I cried and screamed and pulled my hair out, threw a fit nonstop. I mean, from a very, very young age, I was a horribly out of control child and I didn't get things that were consistent with my gender identity. And I'm not to say, you know, now as a teenager or as an adult or anything, if you have parents involved in the picture, you know, to be out of control, but realize that you have a lot more control than, than you give yourself credit for. It's hard to recognize being in control of yourself because I think I don't speak for everybody, but I can say for myself, I think being transgender, you feel so out of control because here you are with the body developing such, you know, a different way than what you feel it should. And, you know, at least I felt what I can remember when I was pre-transition, you know, hormone replacement therapy and everything, that every day that went forward was like two days back because here's another day that I have to reverse and here's another day whatever. You know, and as for results of, you know, hormones, I know I was very fortunate in many ways. Um, everybody has the same story I mean we all go through the same stuff and you know uh, genetics I'm really hairy but my family's really hairy you know like things like that you can't pick apart things and you can't you know watch your transition too closely all this you know this week oh I'm at week 22 I'm at week 23 that's just gonna eat you apart inside if you're feeling better about it and that helps you that's great but it, it just seems like a letdown like just let it happen and go with the flow 
I mean, and the whole thing with anything else, I'd, I'd get into a lot more topics. If somebody wants me to talk about, um, you know, something specific or elaborate on, feel free to comment and I'll make a video about it because I kind of feel stupid just babbling. But um, the whole topic of sexuality would be the next thing I would talk about because, you know, for a long time, I was told that I was a lesbian as a teenager and I never had any interest in dating women, period. I think I was reversed with that. I think I was kind of forced into that where maybe gay people are forced into heterosexual relationships. I was forced into a lesbian relationship and it was way not working and wrong and everything. It was very short lived. My first um, relationship outside of, you know, starting my transition and during my transition was with a female that didn't work either. It was rather insignificant. Then, um, you know, I started dating, um, I dated a biological girl for a short time and that didn't work. I finally, I, I struggled with being gay. I always dated guys before I transitioned. I always liked them. I never had an issue saying that. But once I transitioned and it's like, look, I can be this normal functioning person in society and be seen as a, a heterosexual male. Why, why now am I gay? And I think I struggled with coming out as being gay in the same way that gay men or gay women do who are biological in their gender. So you know, the whole uh, myth of your sexuality changing when you transition is really not the case. Like, that is definitely a myth. I think that the reason a lot of people have sexuality changes um, post-transition is just because they're more comfortable with themselves and they experiment more with themselves. And I think it's uh, pretty obvious that a transgender person would be rather hypocritical to not be open-minded to other body types, you know, anatomically. If we're expecting people to see us a certain way, you know, why wouldn't we open that door and try to see someone else a certain way? Um, not to mention just the deep, you know, the depth that uh, a trans person has to struggle with, with themselves emotionally, really, you know, intro, you know, gathering, where is this coming from, where's that feeling coming from, making sure you're mentally stable, you know, and that you're not feeling like transitioning due to, you know, other reasons, other identity issues. So I can get on that whole topic too, if you want, but I just want to throw a video out there. I've talked, hey, talked to some people before and I feel that um, my outlook is a little bit different. Um, I'm sure there's people out there that are like me. I would have loved to, you know, have networking here on YouTube or LiveJournal or Facebook or anything like that, you know, back when I was younger um, going through this. And I'm not that old. I'm not saying I'm old. But you know what I mean. Back in the beginning. I mean, I think that the trans community is really booming with, with resources. So hopefully I didn't offend anybody. If I did, I apologize. Like I said, you know, just like I have feelings and opinions, so do you. And you know, this is really meant to try to be, you know, informative and helpful, and not, uh, you know, coming across any other kind of way. So feel free to leave me comments because I'll come back and do another video if you'd like. <laughs>